today, dear beloved. It's lovely to have this opportunity to um, dwell in the Word and with each other in the presence of the living and the true God who is personally involved in our lives, who is with us, who loves us and who comforts us with His presence and with His goodness. Therefore, I greet you in the name of the Triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Today we are going to um, talk a little bit further on the theme that we introduced last week about the Christian freedom, of freedom in Christ, which is a very, very important uh, theme in the Christian life, um, to experience the good news, the gospel, uh, that God, Jesus came to set the captives free. And we also said that it is in different levels of freedom, and therefore we start today with the first one, which is the inner freedom, um, the inner space and the experience of what's going inside of us and how we can be free within because it's probably impossible to move into other kinds of freedom if you do not first start with the inner peace and inner freedom that Jesus is giving us. But before we start, let us pray together. Thank you, God, for this wonderful opportunity to know and to learn and to experience the wisdom and the guidance of the Word and the Holy Spirit in our lives to form us. And we pray, Lord, that you will speak to us and teach us in your wonderful will. And Lord, we pray for everyone in this time who are troubled um, in so many different challenges that is presented to us through the COVID-19 and the lockdown and businesses that are struggling and in personal lives. Lord, there's so many things that we need to think anew. And we pray that you will um, show us the way, because you are the way, the truth, and the life. Therefore, we trust in you. We trust in your name. We trust in the promises that you give us, that you will be with us, um, even if we go through hard times. Nothing can part us with, from the love of God. We praise you for that, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, before we start, I would like us to just be become conscious of our inner space, our inner um, world, um, of what's going on in our minds. And I would like to ask you what your mood is at this very moment. Um, it's a Sunday, it's morning, it's day, it, we have had rain, so many blessings from the Lord, but there's also other stuff and other influences that influence our inner life, our mood. Um, it is often that we have peace or, or at peace and we experience bliss and we experience good emotions, but we all know that it is within a matter of seconds when that all can change and something that may happen that may trouble us and um, we have trouble to make sense of it. And we experience easily the uh, inner war, a mood war that is going on. It's almost like a flux of our stream moving all the way. Sometimes it's calm waters, this calm stream, but uh, whenever it hits a rock or something in the way, then it becomes troublesome or uh, milky or, or somewhat like a, a rapid in the river. Uh, it's always interesting how when you look at a river and you see a, a rapids closing in, um, just a couple of meters before that rapid, uh, the water seems very, very calm. Even just before a waterfall, the water may seem very, very calm. I've even seen um, animals walk through water and it's a matter of a few meters before a very big um, drop um, of a waterfall. And that is just a signing of how fragile life is. You 
we can almost walk on the edge, on the verge of something big happening in our lives. And, uh, and it's in a matter of seconds when everything can change. How do we handle that? How do we handle life happening um, every day, every second of the day? Um, and we experience this war. It's trying always to get away from the, the, the fall or the rapid or whatever the case may be, to be in a safe space, to be in a comfortable place where everything is nice and calm and, um, and wonderful. But that is not how life works, is it? The wonderful thing is that God gives us a way to have freedom in our minds to choose um, what is best. And in that ability to be free to choose, we are not um, like in the victims of what is going on, the victims of um, different underlying currents that is working around us and even in us, in our lives, and influences on our lives. And the wonderful news, the good news is that, of the gospel, the good news, that it is not hard, it's not difficult. Jesus himself said that his yoke is light, it's not hard, it's not heavy. Um, and I believe that this is especially in this matter the case, that Jesus may, shows us that it is quite easy. But even though it is easy, and not hard, many people doesn't make the journey, doesn't make the effort um, to take that step in moving into a freedom of the inner space. It is like the recipe that very well-known cook Mrs. Beaton once wrote in one of her recipe books um, it is for making a pastry, and she said the very first thing is catch your hair. Um, you must catch a hair to make a rabbit pie. Um, and it is the same thing. The very first thing is to recognize your false self before you can discover and unveil your true being, your true self within your heart. With that in our minds, let us go to our scripture reading. We're reading from Ephesians chapter two, uh, chapter four, um, from verse seventeen. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the fertility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separate from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to essentially so as, it in, as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on a, the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Now we may recognize that um, Paul used different words to describe the idea of the false self and the true self. He calls it the old self and the new self. But um, it's the same thing that it refers to. The old and the false self versus the new and the true self. The one who, whom you are becoming. 
Now, to explain something of this, I'd like to tell you um, the tale of a person in his 30s, and his name was Inigo. And Inigo um, came from war as um, being hurt by a cannonball which, which broke his leg. And he had to undergo a couple of surgeries, of course, without anesthetics uh, in those times. Um, and he had a very long recovery bed um, in which he was at his home with his parents. And trying to fill his days and to make it more bearable for being lying there alone and lonely, he asked his parents to give, give him some of the local um, court tales and love stories. Um, and then he would picture himself in those love stories as because he didn't have the opportunity to uh, engage in life in, in a matter. He was bedridden. So he lived through the stories as if he was playing in them. But unfortunately, in the town that he lived, there wasn't many such stories. So very quickly, he wanted and asked his parents for more stories. And the only books that his parents could lay their hands upon was stories or books about the saints and of Jesus Christ himself. So he started reading that and imagining himself in the text. Now, he, what he did is he imagined, he started to imagine himself in two different ways. The first way is in the almost the Don Juan romantic kind of character playing out his role within that kind of society. Um, and in the same time, he um, developed the, the inner um, cinema also to put himself in the shoes of the saints themselves and of the people themselves and living that out and playing that role and part in the inner cinema. And what he came to the discovery, which gave him the insight that he have taught thousands of people or followers of him afterwards, is quite simple but very important uh, what he discovered. Now, if I may unveil this person, um, Inigo is also known as Ignatius Loyola, which is probably more well known to many um, scholars, biblical scholars, uh, who have read some of his books. And his books is about not only religious knowledge, or insight or cognitive understanding of what is in the Bible um, or information, but rather about formation, the formation of the Christian life, of Christ in us, of a new being and a new life, exactly what Paul is writing about in Ephesians. Um, and he described in a, a few very simple steps. Um, which I'd like to, um, to tell you as now to share with you. Now, the first step is to recognize um, the reality of the fluxes within our minds, within our inner life, in our thoughts, and our emotions, and to recognize um, that it is not meaningless and it is not random there is a structure there's a pattern to it um, and then the second step is to become conscious about what is happening in our inner life what is playing in our inner cinema um, and where does it come from what is the impulses that creates certain moods and emotions and um, reactions so it's a consciousness, it's the next step. 
the, the next step is to discern between the spirits, as he would call it. And to discern between the spirits, he used two terms. The one is desolation and the other consolation. And he says that that two ideas of whether your ideas or your emotions or your moods are or desolation or consolation um, is describing where that um, feelings or that emotions or ideas comes from. Now, the desolated um, ideas is driven by fear. It is often panic or pressure from something, something that's in your way, something that irritates you, something that something that obstructs your inner being um, and makes it feel as if it is in bondage. You cannot break loose of that fear or that feeling or that um, unease. The other one, the um, consolation, is when it is driven by good ideas like what Paul describes in 1 Corinthians 13, the three things, if you recall, faith, love, and hope. Whenever we are motivated and uh, our ideas are formed around these three pinnacle points, then the outcome is different. It is um, consolation. And then the fourth level that he said is to choose. And this is where many people um, doesn't go that far. They, most people just accept their moods or their emotions as it is a given, as if it is something that they don't have any control over or cannot have any control over. Um, so the choice is, who do you put in the driving self? In these words, the false self or the true self. The false self um, describes who you were. The knowledge of your, your idea, your self-perception, your self-image that is created from how you get to know your thought patterns, how you you are used to think or used to um, choose and make certain decisions and interact with reality and with life. So it's almost just keeping true to a certain pattern that you that has grown with you. It's a, a known route. If you recall the idea of the mouse with the labyrinth um, seeking the cheese, and very soon that mouse um, no, learns the route. So when the cheese is moved, he keeps going the same route. He doesn't look for other routes because he expected to be in a certain place. It's almost the same thing that we experience. We, we create roots in our minds and we identify with that root and that is who I am. If I think I have a good um, self-image or a bad self-image or um, I'm, um, I'm scared of stuff or I'm ashamed, then that is, becomes a mindset almost. And that is the false self, to identify fully with that. Now the true self is an invitation to be open to whom you can become. Um, to know that you have a choice. You don't need to identify with the old pattern of thought. And that is where awakening is possible. You can awaken to new possibilities, to new ways of being, of subjective understanding of yourself. Now, the important thing is to understand the importance and the necessity of this. Well, most people do not understand it. Um, 
they do not understand the importance of formation that god is still forming you're not like in the same person as yesterday and the day before and although we'd like to think of ourselves that way but god is um, helping us to put the old self and every day have opened up new doors to free us to be whoever he calls us to be now Inigo gives us two tools to help us with this. The one is imagination. And we might think that imagination is a childish thing. Um, but actually it's a very, very important gift that is given us. The ability to imagine and to have an inner cinema that you can play yourself into different roles and different and different scenarios and to experience yourself in having a, a choice of um, to choose from in how you prefer and what is best uh, the best choice and not only to rely on your old choices the same old story but to handle every scenario from a perspective of freedom to choose what is best and therefore what Paul says to to choose the will of God to ask the will of God and the other thing that goes with it is self-image to um, understand and to know that I am not set in stone I am God didn't create us um, as a statue that he timbered out with, he formed us and He breathed the breath in us. We are living beings. We can um, um, change. We can uh, evolve. There's an endless possibilities within us. So it is uh, so sad to set yourself in stone. To, it's almost an, a jail that you have put yourself into. Paul talks about this when he, he speaks about the ignorance that is in them due to hardening of their hearts. You know, they, they, their hearts have become like stone. Their ideas, their patterns, their thought patterns have, is set um, in stone. And God wants us to be free of that. He wants it to be vital, vitality and living and, and light and life-seeking and free so with these two simple tools of Ignatius of um, Loyola um, I would like to invite you to join me next week when we uh, talk a little bit more about contemplative prayer um, because this is what he is describing because it's more than just information it is about formation how christ is formed in us and with using the tools in contemplative prayer of your imagination and your self-image um, and but if meanwhile for this week i would like us to catch the hair to catch your hair and therefore just to become conscious um, as often as possible about what's your mood and what is your usual way of dealing with certain impulses in your life what is your route that is set out the kind of repeated um, ways that you deal with stuff because we cannot in the times and especially with the COVID um, the old ways of thinking and making choices probably won't work within the new understanding or a new uh, reality that is carved out for us. It's almost as if our cheese has been moved and we need to be, uh, to have the, the connection with our inner sense, our self-sense and our true self and the new life to be open and to make new choices, to choose who we put in the driver's seat and not just to fall back 
on our old ways and old ideas. Um, therefore, I pray that we all may be free in Christ and that you will set us free. You will truly set um, the captives free, but to start within our inner mind and self-talk. And let us pray together. Thank you, Jesus, that you help us to understand in a very simple way the importance of our personal and our inner and how to get free and break free from old images that we have about ourselves, but to embody ourselves with the with Christ and with truth and with life and with hope and love and faith and to look to the future and to life with a vitality and the ability to be free to choose the will of God in our lives. We pray this in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother and sister, I greet you and I pray that may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us. Amen.